Hi, it's summer and this is my April wrap up. For me, April started with flower a -thon that was hosted by my friend Rachel from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves. It was just a readathon where you were supposed to read books with flowers or plants on the cover. Also, I'm just like looking on Goodreads to see everything that I read this month and I read a lot of green books. <laughs> All right, so the first book that I read for flower a -thon was Rules for Visiting by Jessica Francis Kane, one of my favorite covers ever. Also, if you want to hear more about the flower -thon books, I have a whole entire vlog for it, so I'll link that in the cards and also in the description. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars, and it's about the main character, May, reconnecting with four of her friends. On Goodreads for this one, I said, a gentle and quiet, beautiful and slightly melancholic book about friendship and opening yourself up to life. I loved how this was almost told in vignettes and focused so much on plants and language. I regret not physically reading this one so that I could be highlighting quotes as I went. I just really enjoyed this one. Also, Markle is saying hi. <laughs> hi. I just loved what this book had to say about friendship and also seeing May's character development throughout the book. I just really enjoyed this one and I'm so glad that I did because sometimes with beautiful covers, the insides aren't that great, but this one is beautiful outside and inside. This book made me happy and hopeful, but it also made me cry. This one just made me so thankful for all the friends that I have and I definitely recommend it. After that, I read And Yet by Kate Bear. This one is a poetry collection about motherhood, feminism, societal standards, body image. It was just a really great, beautifully written collection that made me think. When I was in Virginia for girls trip, we were in a bookstore and Gwen found this one and I wanted to show her a poem from it. So I pulled up this one. It's called Beach Body, and Gwen was like wrapping it basically in the bookstore. It was awesome, but it is one that you can kind of wrap. Uh, so this is called Beach Body. It says mountain body. I don't want your cropped body. Give me all the hot body, soft body, curve and dimple big body. Love to see a strong body, loose body, other kind of built body. Want to hear your loud body, lover in the night body. Body. This is not your mother's body and even if it was, look how she moves. Oh, also I forgot to say one of the themes is like marriage. There's a lot of poems on marriage. This one was just really awesome. It wasn't surface level at all, which is a problem that I sometimes have with modern poetry is that it's just very what you read is what you get. I just really loved and connected to almost all of the poems. I feel like I got a lot out of it and it wasn't surface level at all. It definitely made me think and I loved the way that certain poems were laid out on the page. I talk about this one in more individual poems. I am pretty sure quite a bit more in my vlog. So if you want more in-depth things about this one, go check that one out. And then the last book that I completed for flower -thon was Wayward by Amelia Hart. I gave this one four stars. This one follows, if I'm remembering right, three different women throughout time that are all part of the wayward family. One of them was alive back during like all of the witch trials and stuff like that. One of them was alive in like the 20s or 30s, I think. And then there's also a perspective current day. This one's kind of a hard one to talk about. I'm just gonna read what I said about it on Goodreads really quick. I've been trying to figure out how to rate this one because was my reading experience super enjoyable? Not really. Do I think that it's a really good book though? Yes. It was incredibly hard to read because of the subject matter. There was so much darkness for most of this book and I was worried that there wouldn't be a light at the end of the tunnel. Definitely look into trigger warnings before going into this one. I loved seeing the multi-generational perspectives and loved hearing about each of the women's connection with nature. This one was a beautiful sad book with heavy feminist themes and a hint of magic. And I'm glad that I read it. Going into this book, I pretty much only knew that it was historical fiction and that it had like witches and some kind of magic in it. It's definitely very historical, but the magic and witch aspect is not as prevalent of a theme as I thought it was going to be. So if you're kind of worried about like a witch magical book, don't worry, this one does not have very much like fantasy going on. It really was incredibly hard to read though because it just kind of feels like the characters can't like catch a break and you can't catch your breath. like just terrible things just keep happening. And it was just so hard to read. Like I genuinely like was not having a good time reading it, but at the same time, like I couldn't stop because the writing was so good and I liked like the vibes and like the aesthetic. And I also just cared about the characters and wanted to see how their stories ended. Because of all of the pain and suffering, <laughs> I couldn't rate it five stars, but I still enjoyed it. And I recommend it if you 
like look at the triggers and see if you can handle those things. During flower -thon, I started but didn't finish Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. I have been rereading the Throne of Glass series because it's one of my favorites and it's the first series from Sarah that I was introduced to. And also the same week that I was reading this book, I got a Throne of Glass tattoo with my bestie slash cousin Allie. It's a quote from the series and more specifically, it's a quote that first appears in this one. And this is definitely my favorite in the series so far, which is kind of funny because I remember back when I first read the series, I didn't really care about this one that much. I don't know if it was because I couldn't really get on board with like love interest stuff for some reason, or the fact that this book really changes the tone of the series in my opinion. But this time around reading it, being a better and more comprehensive reader, I loved this. I love the choices that it made and the things that it kind of set in motion for the rest of the series. In this book, we get to see new places. We get to meet new characters. I love the new characters that we meet so much. Like I already said, I loved this. I just understood it and enjoyed it so much better this time around and I gave it five stars. <laughs> also, I didn't even show my tattoo. This is it. Um, it says to whatever end. And if you want to see me actually like getting this tattoo and stuff, it's in my flower a -thon vlog. After that, I read The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I read this for the Sleep When I'm Dead book club that's hosted by my friend Jessie. So I will link like Discord and stuff in the description for that. This one is about a group of women who are writers that get invited to this writing retreat by this author who they kind of idolize and being invited to this writing retreat is kind of like rare. It's a really big opportunity. It's in this kind of like creepy, maybe haunted house. And to make it even more interesting, the main character gets invited to the retreat and so does her ex-best friend. So there's kind of like some weird tension going on there as well. The premise of this one sounded amazing. I was convinced this was going to be five stars. Unfortunately, this one was just three and a half for me. I said I was so excited about this one, but unfortunately it fell a little flat for me. It's really forgettable. And like for real it was because I wrote this review like two days after finishing it and I was having a hard time remembering things to write about it and the pacing wasn't great. I also really didn't like the ending. I did like the main twist and setting though. Overall, it was just okay. And then next I read Flower Heart by Katherine Bakewell. I listened to this one on audio and the narrator called the main character Clara, but I'm gonna say Clara because I don't have a British accent. <laughs> this one is described as a YA cottagecore fantasy romance. Clara has very unpredictable, really powerful, kind of violent magic. And a lot of the magic in this book has to do with flowers and stuff and like the language of flowers, which I thought was really interesting. But one day Clara accidentally curses her father and she enlists the help of a childhood friend who also has magic to help her heal her father. This book was just very bland. And I had really high hopes for it because the cover is beautiful. I love the premise. Anything advertised as cottagecore, I'm there. But this one just fell flat. So I rated this one two and a half stars and I said I loved the vibes and aesthetic of this one, but overall it was just okay. Nothing surprised me and I was bored for most of it. And the only character that I liked was Clara's dad. He is a sweet cinnamon roll. He must be protected at all costs. I love him. So this one was just very meh, very bland. The romance was so stale. Like I did not care about any of the characters literally except for Clara's dad. So yeah, two and a half and I am definitely not the only one that has given it that type of rating. When I shared my rating on Instagram, I have like five different people message me and say that they felt the exact same way. So honestly, with that many people kind of saying that it wasn't great, I would say to skip this one. All right, and then we're down to my last two books and I read these both for the Halfway to Halloween Readathon that was hosted by my friend Gwen for her Night Owls. This was for her barn owl tier. It was a really quick like 24 hour ish readathon and we were just supposed to read books that were kind of like spooky and Halloween inspired, which was fun for me because I'm usually a seasonal reader. So like I don't read Halloween books unless it's the fall. These books weren't even necessarily like Halloween books though. So I felt like it wasn't too weird to be reading them during like the spring slash summertime. The first book that I read was Smashed by Junji Ito. Isn't this cover just something? <laughs> Terrifying. Not as creepy as his other anthology that I read, Shiver. That cover is like so scary. <laughs> so this is a horror manga anthology and it's 13 chilling nightmares presented by the master of horror is what the back says. This one 
after reading Shiver and loving it so much, this one just fell very flat. I don't think it was that scary. The dialogue wasn't great. The plot of the stories was not there for me. For this one, I said I ended up skimming so much of this one. It was just underwhelming after reading Shiver a few months ago. Shiver was creative and genuinely scary, while this one was just okay and kind of boring. Some of the ideas in these stories had potential, but the execution was very lackluster and disjointed. The dialogue also just wasn't great in my opinion. There was some good like scary imagery that went on in this one, but the only story that I would really recommend out of this one is the last story in the collection, which is named after the title or the title is named after it. It's called Smashed. That one was the most interesting in my opinion. So yeah, unfortunately I gave this one two stars. And then the last book that I read was What You Gonna Do by Avery Flynn. This cover is so cute, which makes it even more sad that I gave this a two and a half. <laughs> it's kind of funny because this was one of my favorite months ever between getting my tattoo, going on the girls trip, all of that kind of stuff. But it's one of the worst reading months I've had as far as like books that I've enjoyed. It's a good balance though. Like I don't care that I didn't enjoy the books because I loved everything else that happened. <laughs> so it's okay. This book is set in kind of like an alternate world where we're in the US, Virginia specifically, but magic is well known and everywhere. Like it's more common to have magic than to not have it. The main character has grown up her whole life knowing that she's one of the only people in her family that does not have magic. And she feels kind of like an outcast because of that. She's wanting to start like dating and stuff. So she ends up going to a matchmaker who is also her godmother who does like tarot and that kind of stuff. And she ends up setting her up on like a blind date. She ends up going on three blind dates and it ends up being the same guy every time. And she's kind of labeled him as like her arch nemesis or something. There's also a curse in this one. So like I said, a two and a half. And for this one, I said, this cute cover gave me high hopes, but unfortunately this one was just meh. It had too many things going on to the point that you couldn't really tell what the tone was supposed to be. I also kept getting confused because of all the world building and magic that we were supposed to keep straight. The history of this world sounds really intense and high stakes, but while actually experiencing the plot through the characters, it doesn't feel like high stakes at all. It just feels like a silly rom-com and too easy slash convenient. It was also just so cheesy and cringy and it breaks the fourth wall right off the bat. It just really didn't work for me. Also, while I love smut, this book was so horny and it was just too much. I enjoyed it just enough to finish it, but it's definitely flawed and forgettable. So yeah, I don't think I would really recommend this one either. <laughs> I'm definitely so glad that I at least read these ones because I loved these ones. I mean, maybe this one was a little bit sad and hard to read because it talks about some kind of like heavier topics sometimes but still I enjoyed reading this. I read it outside, it was a good time. So thank God for these ones. But yeah, the rest of what I read, not that great. <laughs> that was everything that I read in April though. Let me know in the comments what your favorite book that you read in April was. And also since I read a lot of green books and books with green on them, uh, leave a green heart emoji in the comments if you made it to this point. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.